The crucial P5 1TB M.2 SSD is known for being one of, if not the first ever drive that is based on Micron's DM01B2 controller. This controller has an 8-channel design and also has full DRAM support. The memory chips are made by Micron and have a 96-layer TLC NAND design, but more on those later on. The P5 is available in several capacities and several prices, starting with 250GB priced at 55 US dollars or euros, 500GB priced at 80 US dollars or euros, 1TB at around 150 US dollars, and finally 2TB at 330 US dollars or euros. And all these variants have a manufacturer's warranty of 5 years. We start with the way the SSD looks, because even for this product it matters, especially for those that want to make the best looking system out there. The Crucial P5 uses the standard M.2 2280 form factor, which means that the SSD itself has a length of 80mm and a width of 22mm, and if you didn't know this before, well, now you do. In addition, the design of the Crucial P5 is stylish with an all-black color scheme that will match any system regardless of what other components you have installed. The reason why I'm talking about this is that a lot of manufacturers will just slap any PCB color, usually the cheapest they can get their hands on, and any paper label. This sort of ruins the whole aesthetic of the system, especially if your drives are into the view. The memory chips used on this drive are made by Micron and have the 96-layer TLC NAND design. Each chip has a total storage capacity of 512GB for a total of 1000GB or 1TB of storage capacity. The controller used on the P5 is the Micron DM01B2. This is the highlight of this M.2 drive as it is a brand new controller from Micron. It has an 8-channel flash design and full DRAM support. In addition, the DM01B2 also has dual ARM Cortex-R5 CPU cores. The microcontroller interfaces with the host over a PCIe 3.0 X4 interface and links through the NVMe 1.3 protocol. Speaking of which, the Crucial P5 has a single DDR4-4266 RAM chip, which also uses a total of 1GB of fast storage. Installing the SSD is fairly easy, but perhaps someone is watching this and is not confident in their knowledge regarding the installation of an M.2 SSD. First of all, you get the SSD, locate the M.2 socket on your motherboard and insert the SSD with the correct orientation. You must do this with the SSD at a slight angle and then lower it into the slot. Finally, the rear side of the M.2 SSD is secured to the motherboard with the help of a small metallic screw which you should already have given that your motherboard comes with a couple of them. And now we can move on with the testing of the Crucial P5 1TB SSD. I am going to start the testing with a real world test which is copying of files from one folder inside the Crucial P5 to a different folder on the same drive. The used files have a total combined size of 100GB and in this test you can clearly see that the speed remains steady at around 1.26GB per second, however this is with a relatively small chunk of data when compared with the total drive capacity. In the next test, we can see that the Crucial P5 can easily write around 210GB of data before the speed drops thanks to the cache being filled up. This is not bad at all, in addition the cache recovery speed of the P5 is very good. Actually, this SSD recovers its cache almost immediately after the data was written. This is possible because Crucial uses an adaptive cache which expands when large files are used on the drive. The third test involves the now well-known Crystal Disk Mark benchmark, now reaching version 8. And in this test, the P5 1TB reached an average speed of around 3500MB per second for the reads and 3200MB per second for the writes, which is quite close to the advertised specifications. The next test is the Atto Disk Benchmark, which will give us a rough idea of how the performance is for the tested SSD. In addition, having pure numbers is great for comparing the P5 with other SSDs and storage devices. And in this test, the Crucial P5 1TB sits very close to the Samsung 970 EVO 500GB, which is a great thing to see, especially since that drive is just a little bit faster. And the final test is the loading of a level within the shadow of the Tomb Raider video game. The game itself is running at 1080p with all the graphical settings turned up to their maximum value. DirectX 12 mode is enabled 
and pure hair is disabled. And in this test, the crucial P5 needed approximately 20 seconds to load the first level of the game, a value which placed it on the second position in the chart, being behind the Samsung 970 EVO and also on the same level as the crucial P1. However, there are issues for some reason. The crucial P5 runs warmer than expected. With the new controller, which does use dual ARM Cortex R5 CPU cores, the crucial P5 reached around 100 degrees Celsius. Mind you, this was without a heatsink applied on the SSD. With a heatsink installed, the maximum temperature dropped to around 70 degrees Celsius, which is acceptable. The way the thermal testing is done is pretty simple, just copy massive file over a longer period of time from one drive to the reviewed SSD and watch how everything gets very warm. The Crucial P1 1TB SSD is a good NVMe drive that has a good performance for its price point. Speaking of which, the Crucial P5 in the 1TB variant is available for around 150 US dollars or euros, which is not that expensive, but it's not exactly a bargain either, especially when other models on the market can be had for less and match the performance of the P5. The best thing about the Crucial P5 is the real-world performance. While synthetic benchmarks are really nice to look at, the real-world performance is where everyone has their interest in. The drive achieved on average a file transfer speed of 1.26 GB per second, which is great, especially since modern video games are increasing in sizes and so does the size needed for our storage devices. The Crucial P5 uses a pseudo SLC type cache, which in the case of this drive has a size of around 93 GB. The good thing about the size of the cache is that it is large enough to dampen any write or read burst of speed, and thus allow the SSD to deliver a smooth speed and performance. In addition, this size should be enough for most workloads in your daily usage given that the software and games that will write more than 100 GB of data at the same time are far in between. However, once the space limit is reached, then the speed of the drive will lower until the file transfer or writing activity is completed. Afterwards, the SSD will recover its cache and it's back to the usual performance. One issue with the Crucial P5 is the thermals. With no heatsink installed and tested for a longer period of time, the P5 easily reached a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius, which will trigger the SSD to thermal throttle and lower its temperature, and thus lower its performance. However, once a heatsink was installed over the SSD, the temperature dropped to around 70 degrees Celsius at maximum load, which is much better. Fortunately, most, if not all modern motherboards do have their own M.2 heatsinks included, so this temperature issue shouldn't be present, but it is a good thing to be aware of it. If you liked this review, then you can perhaps consider subscribing for more and also if you want to support the channel in a direct way, then in the description below you can find both the Patreon and Subscriber Star pages of the channel.